Layers are known to add volume, dimension, movement, and even personality to our hairstyle. And if you've kept the same hairstyle for some time and you're kind of bored with it, adding layers is probably one of the most popular ways to freshen up your look without compromising the length. But did you know that layers can also have some proportional benefits? In this video, we're going to talk about the visual effects of layers on our facial proportions and what kind of features can benefit from having layered hair or who might want to avoid layers altogether. We'll also talk about different lengths and styles of layers and how our natural hair type, texture, or density might also affect our choices. So if all of that interests you, make sure to stay tuned till the end. For those of you that are new, this channel is all about sharing logical and practical knowledge around finding and developing our personal style that makes our uniqueness shine. If that's something you're interested in, make sure to subscribe and stick around. So I thought it would be fun to talk about layers today since I recently got a haircut and I added some heavier layers. I've had layered hair for some time now, but this time around I got them a little bit shorter and we've really lightened the volume in the ends quite a bit and I'm loving the new change. So layers are actually one of the most frequently recommended hairstyles for my clients for a number of reasons. The first reason being that they're great for taking some prominence away from the lower third. If you guys don't know what I mean by lower third, I'm referring to the horizontal proportions of the face, which divides the face into three sections using horizontal lines. So the distance from the top of the hairline to the eyebrows is the upper third, from the eyebrows down to the tip of the nose is the middle third, and the area from the tip of the nose to the end of the chin is referred to as the lower third of the face. And what I mean by prominence in the lower third is the amount of attention that's drawn to this area because of any uniqueness found in the features or proportions. It could be that the length of the lower third is longer than the upper and middle thirds, which would naturally make the lower third appear more accentuated within the face, or it could be the angularity or the width of the jawline that highlights the lower third more, or it could be the shape and the size of the lips, the protrusion in the chin, or the length of the philtrum, etc. So there could be many reasons why the lower third becomes more highlighted and draws a lot of attention. Now the important thing to note here is that I'm not saying that certain features are good or bad. We all have different features and proportions and that's what makes us unique, so it doesn't mean that if the lower third of the face is highlighted more, that's necessarily a bad thing. It's just that if we already have certain features or proportions that draw a lot of attention to one area of the face naturally, it makes sense to balance that level of emphasis so that if your best feature is elsewhere in the face, we can allow the attention to be drawn more to your best feature instead. Oftentimes that best feature is the eyes since our eyes are the most expressive part of our faces and we want the person looking at us to focus on our eyes instead of elsewhere in the face. So what I'm explaining is the visual effects of where our gaze is naturally drawn to depending on the facial proportions and the uniqueness of the features. Now in previous videos, I've provided some tips around how to make the lower third of the face appear less prominent and draw less attention to the area. The first tip was to take the hair completely away from the lower face in order to to remove the contrast created by the hair against the skin. When we wear our hair down, there's a tendency for the lower part of the face to appear more prominent because of the high level of contrast created between the hair and the skin. And by taking the hair away, we're removing that contrast created by the hair, so naturally, any prominence found in the lower face becomes less apparent. And this can be achieved either through a very short haircut like a pixie cut or by wearing our hair up. Another tip was to use a lighter hair color around the lower face to reduce the contrast between the hair and the skin. The darker the hair, the higher the contrast it creates against the skin tone, and by using a lighter hair color, the reduced contrast between the hair and the skin allows for less attention to be drawn to any features within the lower third. Of course, this is dependent on how light or dark the skin tone actually is, so maybe for some people, a light blonde might actually create a higher level of contrast. So the point is to make the hair color more similar to the skin color so that the contrast between the two areas can be reduced, whether that means lightening or darkening the hair. Now, some of these tips might not always be applicable. What if I don't want to get a pixie cut or bleach my hair that's going to cause significant damage? And what if I don't want to wear my hair in an updo all the time? And this is where the benefit of adding layers comes in. Apart from the contrast created by the color of the hair, the weight and the heaviness of the hair around the lower face can also be another factor that raises the contrast level and highlights the prominence of the lower third more. And with layers, because the hair volume is lightened in the ends, the reduced volume can also reduce the contrast and help with lessening that prominence. With Lucy Hale, she has some width in her jawline and a prominent chin, and because she also has a high cranial top, her forehead also appears slightly 
lower in comparison, which naturally draws more attention to her lower face. So heavy, blunt hairstyles like these really amplify the hair volume around her lower third and makes her face appear quite bottom heavy. And adding layers not only makes her hair appear less heavy and gives it more dimension and movement, but the reduced volume in the ends also helps with taking away some of the heaviness in her jawline and chin, and it helps with bringing more balance between her upper and lower face. Fergie is another similar example. The length of her lower third is the longest section within her face, and she has a low forehead and a high cranial top as well that naturally draws more attention in a downward direction. And without the layers, the fullness in her hair adds more width to her lower third and accentuates the prominence of her jawline, whereas with layers, the heaviness is taken away from the end, so naturally, our gaze focuses more around her eye level where her hair is the heaviest. Another reason why I recommend layers to a lot of my clients is because layers are great at adding a shortening effect on the face. In my previous videos, I've mentioned that a short hairstyle like a bob is great at visually shortening the overall length of the face. Our gaze tends to follow the direction of the hair, so if you have a long face or if you have other features that make your face appear long, then long hair will accentuate the length of your face even more. And short hair can prevent that by creating a visual break that stops the gaze from being dragged downwards. But again, this might not always be feasible, right? What if we want to keep our hair long? Or what if I have a short neck, for example, and I want to use my long hair to elongate my neck visually? So depending on our preferences or on other proportional differences that we might also have, short hair might not always be the best choice, even for long faces. And layers are a great alternative because they can also add a visual break and have a similar effect on the facial length as shorter hairstyles. The shortening effect on the face is definitely more effective when all of the hair is short. But the benefits of layers is that on top of eliminating the need to compromise our hair length, layers can also be very versatile in terms of styling. If there are longer layers, we can style them inwards to create a visual break just under our chin. Or if they're shorter than chin level, we can also style them outwards to add more width to the face that can also help with adding a shortening effect. So layers can be a really great way to incorporate certain visual effects that shorter hairstyles can have on the facial proportions without having to compromise the overall length of the hair. I'm a great example of someone with a long face and I don't necessarily look terrible with a bob and I've had a pixie cut before as well multiple times and it didn't look bad, but I have quite broad shoulders and while I like my shoulders, I also like the effect that long hair can have on them as well because the hair past the shoulder line creates a visual break that adds a narrowing effect on my shoulders. So I quite like that effect and my hair is pretty thick and coarse so despite it being quite straight, at a shorter length around my chin, the hair volume starts to get out of hand and my hair kind of starts to look like a triangle. So my reasons for adding layers is to one, manage my hair volume and two, to add a shortening effect on my face without having to chop all of my hair off. And whether the layers are at a shorter length like it is now or at a longer length where I can curl them inwards to create that visual break right under my chin, I'm happy with both styles. So I feel like this is a really good happy medium that I finally landed on and I don't think I'll ever go short again. But as we know, there are so many different styles of layers that we can choose from. So let's talk about how to determine the right style based on the characteristics of our natural hair. In terms of hair type, whether you have straight hair like mine or you have curly hair, the visual effects of layers will still be similar because what we're talking about is reducing the overall volume of the hair in the ends in order to reduce the contrast between the hair and the lower face. But obviously, curls add more volume in general, so if you have very curly hair, the hair volume around the lower face might still be quite substantial, even with layers. But the important thing to remember is that whether with straight or curly hair, what we're trying to achieve is a change in the overall shape of the hair. Without layers, the hair volume will appear fuller along the bottom than along the top, whereas with layers, it'll be the opposite. And our gaze will naturally follow the area where the hair is the heaviest, so the goal, regardless of whether the hair is straight or wavy or curly would be to make the hair around the upper face be the heavier area so that the attention will be drawn upwards. With that said, there are a couple of cases where layers might not be such a good option. The first case is if your natural hair texture is very fine or the hair density is low. If the volume of the hair around the lower face is already quite thin, whether that's because you have fine hair or your hair density is very low, you might not want to thin out your hair any further 
or you might just want to stick to very subtle layers. And the second case is if you lack prominence in your lower third already. These would be instances where you might have a very short lower third or a delicate or recessed chin. And opposite from the techniques we talked about that take away the prominence from the lower face, in this case, we want to achieve the opposite by adding more prominence and definition to this area. So styles that maintain a heavier volume around the lower face would be more beneficial if your lower third needs more prominence and added definition. Now, in terms of deciding on the length of layers and how much weight from the hair to remove using layers, the more layers there are and the shorter they are, the rougher and the more raw the overall style becomes. If we look at styles like wolf cuts, for example, the layers in these styles are quite short and severe, and we can see how the style of the hair just seems a bit more untamed, as opposed to more subtle and longer styles of layers. Of course, it also depends on how we style the layers, so even if there are a lot of short layers, we can still achieve a softer and a more glamorous look by adding a lot of volume and curls to the layers. So depending on your preferences in the overall style and also your natural hair type, texture, and density, these are some factors that you might want to take into consideration if you're interested in layers. One more thing to note is that as the hair volume becomes lighter around the face, there is an added tendency for more emphasis to be placed on the facial features themselves. This is somewhat of a similar logic to having short hair versus long hair. With long hair and especially with full voluminous long hair, there's a level of glamour that the hair adds to our overall look. And short hair takes that effect away, which naturally brings more attention to our facial features and it brings out the inherent impression of our faces a little bit more. With layers, if the layers are very severe and a lot of volume is removed from the hair, the effect can be somewhat similar to that. So if you naturally have a very youthful and innocent face, for example, that natural impression that you have becomes more accentuated with the reduced hair volume. On the other hand, if you have a lot of yang elements and straight lines in your face, those elements can naturally become more highlighted with the added layers as well. So knowing our own inherent impression and knowing the lines of our faces also definitely helps with understanding whether a certain style of layers would be suitable or not. So these are some factors to keep in mind if you're considering layered hair, and it does come down to our preferences at the end of the day, but I hope that the information I've shared with you today can help guide you in choosing the right style of layers for yourself. I'll see you in my next video, and until then, stay unique and stay gorgeous!